Welcome to Three O'Clock with Sac. Give me a moment to invite our Spanish-speaking guest. Bienvenido y gracias por ver Three O'Clock con Sac. Si quieres acceso al programa en español, por favor, marque ese número que aparece en la pantalla, cual es 646-749-3123. Cuando le conteste su llamada, marque 779-328-221. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea Rodriguez. I am the Leadership Coordinator for Southside Organizing Center. Happy Friday to all of you. We are so thankful you can all join us again for another episode of Three O'Clock with Sock. Um, I just let our guests know about our interpretation line. We will have a link for you in the comments. Um, in addition to that, you can access all of our videos um, through our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel and the translated version of every single episode. There is over a year's worth of information about COVID-19 and what's been happening in our city. So please uh, check it out. And then there's a lot of great things for you. So, all right, in next work, before we bring on our wonderful guest, we're actually gonna show you an amazing video of a recent transformation of Pulaski Park. Just be one moment. I'm gonna give Marlene just one more second. I think we can get it for you. It really is a beautiful little video. So we wanna make sure that we show it, but I'm just gonna give her one more second just to retry that. You know what? We're having a little technical difficulty with it. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that we add a link to this right after our episode today. Um, it really is a gorgeous video and it really does show you an overview of the project. But why don't we go ahead and bring on Esperanza Gutierrez now, one of the resident leaders with KK River Neighbors in Action. And she can tell us a little bit more about the project and hopefully we can get that video going a little later. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, welcome. Uh, nice to see you. It's so good to see you. It's I know with COVID, it makes it difficult, and but now it's spring, and I'm so excited to see all the wonderful things happening at Pulaski Park with this project. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know a little bit more about the Kinnikinnik River Neighbors in Action. My name is Esperanza Gutierrez, and I've been a resident of the Pulaski area for over 25 years. I live right across the park, so I have seen a lot of going. Uh, one thing about living in Milwaukee County is that Pulaski is just one jewel of the necklace surrounding Milwaukee. We are connected by parks one way or another uh, within each neighborhood. And Pulaski at this point has blossomed and has, has gone back to nature. Um, I really hope the video is um, something that you can tap into so you can see it. What happened is in uh, when M Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewer District was given this contract, part of their funding um, told us that told them that they have to get the voices of the community involved. So they got together with 16th Street Clinic at and SAC, which was at that time directed by Steve Fent, and they created a neighborhood group. And the group selected the name the name of. Kinnikinnick River Neighbors in Action because we wanted to take action. We wanted our voices heard. Uh, one example of the voices heard is that when we were selecting some art pieces for the park, the children outnumbered the adults. And that's why you see some of the chairs and art pieces looking like something that was um, like Dr. Seuss. 
because it's so whimsical. My kids love them. Yeah. That they voted for it and therefore they were there. Uh, the artist took uh, pencil and paper first and then brought hands on. So the actual children and the parents and everybody came and built them together. They painted mm -hmm. everything all the way from the skeleton of the wood to the final product and the neighbors are the ones keeping it up because they are used and they are weathered. So they're painted and try to be kept fresh all the time. Uh, the group wants community involvement. We are partners with major organizations, but we live here, we see it every day and it, it is gorgeous right now. And we want to maintain it that way. The only way we can maintain it that way is by citizen participation. The people that live and work and use it to come here. Uh, you can actually take beautiful walks. And uh, it's amazing how when you're deep in it, the city dis disappears. You can hear the brooks singing. You can hear the ducks and see them actually um, the families that come true and swimming and fishing and some of them are just dancing and taking sun baths as well as the people. There's an area that's like by the bridge that has steps and I've seen people just bringing their kids and books and reading. I do ask that we don't bring bread. It, bread is not good for the geese, but it's the thought that they're thinking that they're taking care of the ducks by feeding them. But bread is not a not a good thing um we have a football court a futsal court um the only one in the south side at this point a uh, basketball court and a children's area and we are also connected to the only indoor pool uh, for the county on the south side so it is full of services and in this COVID time even in winter it was a place to walk where you can walk and breathe fresh air if people weren't around you, but you know, if they are where people were wearing masks, uh, this neighborhood is filled with mascots, pets, dogs, and whatever. And people would tend to take the walks with the animals. One responsibility of a parent of a fur legged creature is to pick up after yourself because there is so many children playing and stuff and it's, that is not healthy and that is not healthy to get into our drinking water, which is the KK River too. But um, the programs we have are programs, we ask the people, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna see in the park? And then we either write grants and things like that. Uh, we've had people doing yoga. We've had paint, painting lessons. Um, we have a annual picnic uh, with the, the people here. Uh, at this point, everything is is free of, of any charges because people donate and we will ask for donations or we write grants as a team. We've had, uh, I believe, uh, three presidents so far. Uh, Maritza Martinez, Gabriela Rosillo, and our latest one is Travis Hope. And they're, they work as a team with the residents. So when the, in the film they say a shared vision, it is a shared vision of the government uh, institutions and most of all of the people that, that live and work here and or come in and share the space and the time in the park. So it is, it is um, something that is very valuable to our community we are at this point very congested as far as buildings and people and it is a lovely place to as they say take a a sun bath or a forest bath at this point exactly and you know as a person who actually discovered pulaski park playing with your children back in high school and now that i live in walking distance from it it really has transformed and you know in that video really just show the huge differences and like you mentioned you know the wildlife is returning the sounds are so beautiful there um and and yes i i just i'm so excited and i'm so honored to be able to you know enjoy it with my family and i know so many great families do tell us a little bit about the scavenger hunt that you all have 
uh, planning right now, which I think is a great way to discover Pulaski Park in this project. We are having a, it, on our Facebook, it says at the end of this month, but we're trying to increase it into May because with the COVID, there was not that much movement and also the weather didn't provide um, the rains and stuff they haven't provided much uh, time and space for the people to walk it but it is a way to discover it's all the way from the k, k river plaza which is uh, uh, a strip of land between 13 and 16th and harrison where it's a pedestrian you can walk and discover little things uh, it asks you to look at the river and what do you see and uh, it it helps people appreciate and discover more. So it's a way of getting the community to be involved and uh, introduce children into the park. So there's a safe environment for them to discover where they can, again, reconnect with nature, which is one of the great healers of our time at this point with the, the COVID situation. Absolutely. And I think, you know, having outdoor activities with COVID, something like this can be very, very uh, positive for so many families right now. So we will make sure that we make a post about this and we share and we look forward to seeing the update of it extending. I know right now it does say that the last date is is today, the 30th, but we're so thankful that it's going to be going longer. And uh, thank you to Marlene, our producer. She is actually putting in a lot of links in here. Um, to contact uh, your organization, your Facebook page. We also want to say a little shout out to Casa Maria Catholic Worker. Hello for watching us today. We appreciate you so much. And any viewers, if you have any questions at all for Esperanza while she's here, we would love to have them in the comments or send us an emoji. Um, you already mentioned earlier, there's no cost to residents. Um, any other information that you wanted to give about the services that you provide? Uh, when are your meetings? How about that, if, if people want to join in? With the COVID, we kind of suspended them. Uh, we're trying to kick them back by June. Uh, at this point, it would have to be outdoor, and hopefully the weather uh, works with us. But uh, usually we have them on Wednesday from 6 to 7, um, the second, uh, Wednesday, uh, second Wednesday of the month. And they're free. If you want to uh, come and share, we will be following whatever the city is with COVID lines. And outdoors, we can we can spread out and wear masks and be safe, but still participate. Again, it is a meeting place. Uh, we do have the CPU unit, which is the community officers come in and give us a, like a black watch report of what's happening in the neighborhood so we can be careful. So it's like, you know, getting right now, the, um, a lot of the car stealings are the Nissan and the Hyundai and, you know, get a club and be safe. So we get a report of what type of crimes are happening so you can protect yourself from it. And uh, we have uh, uh, one of our residents is also an uh, older person, Jose Perez, and he joins us. And so we have uh, residents coming in and talking about what they want to see or issues that they may have in the park. And uh, we try to come up with a, a game plan of how to do it, how to bring resources into the community. But the best thing is to create community. We want you to come in, and I always write community, unity in, in uh, bold letters because that's what we're trying to create. With community, we want to create unity. And again, what you want to see in the park will be there. We ask people that come in to be respectful that they have spent more money here than uh, creating the uh, American Stadium. And therefore, we want it to be safe. We want this to to create some unity in our neighborhood. So that that's yeah. the main point of this uh, neighborhood program or, or group is to be able to enjoy, create community, and make it safe for everybody to use, and to have a voice to tell the county what we need. Do we need picnic tables? Do we need connections? Um, you know, uh, the pool was almost closed twice 
and the community came together and had it opened. So we want, we, you know, we, they haven't said anything about reopening it, but we want, we want that, we need that. There's not that many places that older people could even go and do their uh, exercise classes without having to belong to a club. So it, it is a good resources that is used all year round. And uh, absolutely. In fact, uh, the neighborhood group also paid a couple times for the community to come in and use the pool. So it, it is some, it, as long as the community asks for it, we will try to find resources to make it so not just a dream, but have activities that are valued for and by the community. Beautiful. And I love that Connecticut River Neighbors in Action is such a wonderful example of what community leadership and community with the unity, um, what it looks like. And I'm so thankful for that. And I'm thankful to be close to this neighborhood that I can walk there and enjoy it. And I definitely look forward to supporting it going forward. Um, any last things that you want to share with our residents before we sign off for today? I be involved, be active in it. Uh, as they see you treat something, they will treat it that way. So if you don't invest your time and your energy, we could also lose it. Um, they're, they're having issues with money and funding the parks. And to me, losing that green necklace, which Pulaski is a jewel of, it will, it will damage it will damage us because like this has been a resource that we've used, um, especially in this time to just be able to walk and enjoy some fresh air and some freedom. And uh, it's a beautiful resource that we have here on the South side and many activities you can be, you know, surrounded with a crowd or you can just sit by the brook and, and speak to it and, and connect with nature in the middle of a uh, cement jungle, so. Absolutely, I absolutely agree. Our county parks are treasures that deserve to be protected by the people for sure. And we appreciate you so much Esperanza. We always look forward to chatting with you and we hope we have you on the forum again soon. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you. Excellent. Again, thank you to Kinnikinnik River Neighbors in Action and Esperanza Gutierrez and the amazing things that are happening at Pulaski Park. Um, while unfortunately we couldn't show this really great video that really summarized the project that recently happened there, uh, we will make a point to add the link to our comments today. And hopefully uh, later on we can also make a Facebook post for that because it really does summarize just all the hard work that the residents put in. Oh, are we trying it again? Let's see. We do have the bubbling um, river, which I think, let's see if we can get it, but this is a great image itself. Um, previously there had been cement sides, which the other video will show you how they removed it. It was a huge process to do that. Now it has the rocks, increased irrigation. It looks so much healthier. And again, it's one of my favorite places to picnic in the city. Um, please make sure that you're social distancing, but enjoy it and take advantage of the scavenger hunt because it really is a great way to discover all the little nooks and crannies that are waiting for you there at Pulaski Park. Um, up next, we're going to have a pre-recorded video, and this will be highlighting a really, really important event that's happening tomorrow, which is May 1st, which is not just tourist season, even though we love tourist season, uh, but also it's May Day, which is a huge call to action. Uh, we're gonna show the video in a moment, but we'll have Tom Molina, an organizer from Voces de la Frontera coming on to explain exactly what May Day is. And we'll show that now. Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Rodriguez and I'm the leadership coordinator for Southside Organizing Center. Joining me today, I have organizer Tommy Molina from Voces de la Frontera. Hi, Tommy, how are you today? Hi, Andrea, nice to be here with you. Good to see you again. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know about your role at Voces? Well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, as Andrea said, my name is Tommy Molina. I'm the Milwaukee chapter organizer at Voces de la Frontera. Been in this capacity um, coming up on two years now. 
Wonderful, wonderful. And let us know a little bit about what your role is at Voces. Well, as the Milwaukee chapter organizer, my job is to, you know, uh, help run the events in Milwaukee or uh, help organize the members, um, help facilitate meetings with elected representatives and overall keep the community engaged. And so um, that looks, as you know yourself as a community organizer, that looks different from, from month to month. But um, essentially, you know, we're just engaging the community and trying to get them involved uh, in the political process. Absolutely, and Southside Organizing Center is so thankful to be a partner of Voices and that we work, can work together, especially in immigration rights. Um, why don't you let us know um, a little bit deeper about Voces de la Frontera and the VDLF Essential Worker Right Network? Right, well, um, as many people know, Voces de la Frontera is the largest immigrant rights organization in, in the state of Wisconsin. We um, primarily based out of the South Side. Uh, we also have a youth branch of Voces called YES, Youth Empowered the Struggle. They're active in Milwaukee Public Schools. Um, and um, in regards to the Essential Workers Right Network, that formed uh, recently during the pandemic when we saw that there was a need for uh, organizing immigrant essential workers who are being exploited, who are being taken advantage of. And so uh, through our own uh, network of members working in, in factories and as essential workers, we were able to um, help factories unionize and to demand better wages, um, better benefits, and, and that group continues strong today. Excellent, excellent. I, I am a child of parents of factory workers and I have a lot of family members that have spent many, many hours, you know, working in factories of poor conditions in this city and other places. So I'm so thankful that you all are doing that work. Um, you have a very important um, event coming up, um, May Day on this Saturday, May 1st. Let us know about that. Well, May Day is an annual celebration. You know, it dates back to 2006. Um, the, the marches, every year it's manifested itself differently, but usually in the form of a march, the marches have um, gone up to 80,000 people marching on uh, in the Capitol. Um, last year, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we had to host for the first time ever May Day online. But we're really happy and glad that this year we will be coming back for an in-person event. Um, that's gonna begin, as you said, on Saturday um, at 10 a.m. in front of our new office building. We're moving away from our uh, location on South Fifth Street to 8th and Mitchell. Uh, the corner there. And so at 10 a.m., we'll begin gathering um, as a community block party, gathering um, with our community and uh, our allies um, until, uh, until we, be, we commence the march at 12. This year, we're marching to the federal building um, and we are calling for a halt on deportations. We're calling for citizenship for all and we're calling for driver's licenses to be passed for undocumented immigrants in Wisconsin. Um, every single year, we've been able to count on the community to show up and be present. And, and this year, we're making that same ask. Excellent. And I'm with you. I'm so glad that this can be an in-person event and it, it's outdoors. Um, let us know, is this going to be family friendly? Should people be bringing masks? What are you hoping for? Yeah, we'll be in, just like any, just like anything else, we'll be enforcing COVID-19 protocols. Um, you know, we were fortunate that this year we were able to partner with the city. So we will be doing vaccinations um, on Saturday, the, the Pfizer vaccine. Um, for, the, for the community to know there's no need to have an ID um, and it will be, uh, interpretation will, will be provided. Um, but other than that, we will be enforcing um, the, you know, social distancing and mask wearing. Um, it is a family friendly event. We'll have food, some cumbia, um, uh, some uh, coffee, and um, you know, it'll be a place of gathering for the community for all ages. Well, you had me at cumbia and coffee. Those are the two things I need in my morning. So I love that. I'm excited because my father, who is, you know, is an undocumented worker, he's retiree now, um, but he's actually in town right now. So we're actually going to show up and have a family event. So grateful that we can celebrate this all together and come together to ask for these rights that are just overdue, really. Um, any other calls to actions that you might have for our viewers? Well, yes, we'll be, um, obviously we know that it's more than just marching and demonstrating. We need our elected representatives to take action. And so we are calling on um, 
you know, city and state officials to take action on comprehensive immigration reform. We'll be passing out flyers, making it easy for people to get involved, to call their representatives, to email their representatives, to tell their representatives what's on their mind. And uh, we hope that everybody listening to this will join us in that call. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm so thankful that you're bringing that education piece in there. So it's not just a one-time event, but people can go forward with good decisions and making sure they're letting their elected officials know. Um, any other uh, resources, programs, or anything you else have that you would like our viewers to know that they can utilize? Well, our uh, English classes have started back up in person. And so as the community knows, those, those are free. Um, our citizenship classes are um, beginning as well. Um, we are going to be starting our know your rights trainings. Um, and, and, and then the last thing is if you have a relative or you yourself or a family member that's in Milwaukee public schools, get involved in youth empowered in the struggle, uh, and become a leader in your community and at your school. Excellent. Love it. Um, any contact information or anything else that you'd like us to know? Of course. Yeah. You can call our main office at 414-643-1620. You can call myself directly if um, you have any questions about the event at 262-696-9415. Beautiful. We'll also be linking some contact information and the website in our comments today as well. Um, I always wonderful to see you, Tommy. Any other things that you'd like to add to our conversation before we go? No, thank you for having me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you and your dad on, on Saturday, Andrea. I can't wait. I can't wait. All right. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Hasta luego. Thank you. Hasta luego. Excellent. Thank you so much to Tommy Molina for that interview. Uh, so grateful that we have our May Day coming up tomorrow. I definitely will be there with my family with my mask on. Please come take advantage of it. It seems like an incredible event. And I really, again, want to appreciate the fact that they're going to give out information and calls to action and the fact that they, you can get COVID-19 vaccinations there. Pretty wonderful. Um, we have some links for you in the comments. There's also um, a link in there to register for tomorrow's event so they can know how many people to expect. Want to give a good shout out to my friend, David. Hey, David. So good to see you. Uh, loving that you're following the show. Feel free to share it or tag any friends that you think would love to see it as well. Up next, we're going to go ahead and have Marlene Zoran come on and join us for a COVID-19 update. Thank you, Andrea. All right. Um, so I want to quickly share my screen to give you guys an idea of the upcoming. Oh, there we go. Uh, so if you go to healthymke.com, and then you're going to click on COVID vaccine locations in the corner. And then you will come to this screen. You're going to scroll down. And then you're going to see all of the different locations where you can go get your COVID-19 vaccine. So uh, the Calvary Baptist Church was actually distributing them on North Teutonia. But they canceled the event. So that's no longer happening. But the Muslim Community Health Center um, is open Friday and Saturday through May 31st. Um, and this is a weekly event that happens at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Friday, Saturday. It is walk-in, so you do not need an appointment to go in to get your vaccine. Their location is at 803 West Layton Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53221. You can call them at 414-939-4411. And their website is right here. So if you can see here, this is, this is the perfect spot to find not only uh, public health department clinics that are open, but also local community centers that have COVID vaccine clinic walk-ins right now. So if you can see here, Hyatt Pharmacy is partnering with King's Temple House of the Living God to have um, administration of vaccines Friday, April 30th. This is an event and it's going to happen 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They're accepting all Milwaukee County individuals and they're administering the Pfizer vaccine. They're located at 3500 North Sherman Boulevard. If we keep scrolling, we'll kind of find the ones that are more on the south side. 
So if you see here, Walker's Point Community Clinic is having an event May 8th on Saturday. And their walk-ins are accepted 9 a.m. to noon. They have the Pfizer vaccine, and they're located at 130 West Bruce Street, Bruce Street, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53204. If we keep scrolling down, we'll find more events. So this is kind of like how you can go about finding different um, vaccine locations that are in your neighborhood. But you can also at in on the same site when you scroll down you can go to hyatt pharmacy's site directly to register for the covid vaccine you can go to walgreens here myers pick and save these are all locations that are also distributing the vaccine and you can go on the list of all the covid vaccine options in wisconsin by clicking on the milwaukee the Wisconsin Department of Health Services site here. So it's very accessible. I really like this site. Um, it's very easy and friendly to use. It's in English, Spanish, and Hmong. So if you click on the Spanish button, everything will be translated into Spanish, which is easier for you to read. And the same thing here, you, you can scroll down. Um, uh, I believe you would need to click again on uh, the vaccine locations here. And then, yeah, there you go. So there's that. And then you can also look at, so for example, I can put in my address. I don't want to put in my address. Let's put in my, put in my zip code. And it'll give me the closest locations to me that are within the five miles. And I can choose which miles, how far away I wanna travel, the location type, if it's an event, community clinic, health department, health system, pharmacy clinic, or a temporary clinic. So I can do that. And then th this scroll in is for walking, walk-ins only, if you only want walk-ins. So you can see here, the one that I can go to um, it requires an appointment. It's the Advocate Aurora Health center at 2900 west oklahoma avenue and then um these are there are some events that are near me that i can go to but yeah so now i'm going to start sharing that and i am going to share another screen for you guys this one is the um wisconsin department of health services site uh, they are tracking the number of vaccines that are distributed in wisconsin so i'm going to give you guys some numbers so currently in wisconsin 43 percent of the population in wisconsin has been vaccinated has been fully vaccinated so i think that's really amazing that 43 percent in order for us to get to at least 80%, which is what we need for everything to kind of reopen again, um, we would need to reach 80% herd immunity, right? Uh, and you can see here by age range, they have it. So the highest number of individuals that are fully vaccinated are those that are 65 and up at 80%. Um, coming in at, at, coming in second is 55 to 64 year olds. Uh, the lowest is 16 to 17 year olds. And then by race, uh, the highest people number of people vaccinated are the white community. Coming in second is the Asian community. Uh, coming in third, actually the highest, yeah, yeah. Coming in third is the Hispanic community. And then coming in, Fourth is the American Indian community and then the black community. Uh, and then when you click over here, this is essentially try to find Milwaukee County. It'll show you that 40% of Milwaukee County residents have received at least one dose of the vaccine. 31.4% of residents have completed the whole vaccine series. So they've gotten their full vaccines there fully completed and good to go. So that's really amazing. So we're kind of almost halfway there, um, but we're still working on it and 
we're chugging, chugging, chugging through. Uh, but yeah, we'll have all of those links in the comment section for you guys, for you guys to get all of that information. And uh, that being said, I'm going to give it back to Andrea. Excellent. Thank you so much to Marlene Zoran for that COVID-19 update. Southside Organizing Center is so grateful that we can bring all of our viewers and residents, our public health coordinator, and Marlene always brings an update every single forum. So we're very grateful for that. And I'm loving that last link, especially that new visual to kind of see exactly how close we are to herd immunity. Um, yeah, so up next, we're gonna go ahead and show our community uh, resource for today. And we're gonna be actually highlighting the Benedict Center. Uh, Southside Organizing Center is in partnership with the Benedict Center, also in partnership with the Empower um, project, uh, which we're going to show a link to the um, South Side, linking to the Benedict Center. Right now, they are asking for jeans, pants, and leggings for women, size four to seven. I'm going to give Marlene just a second to see if we can tag it up there. Otherwise, we will make sure we add the links to the comments. Um, in the link, you're going to find the phone number that you should call. Um, or if you want to email or message the Benedict Center directly, their team is always available um, to take a message and they, they get back to you very promptly. So again, they're looking for size four to size seven um, jeans, pants, and leggings for women. So if you have any of them in good condition or maybe you want to get new or maybe even just want to drop off a gift card or mail something to them, it will very much be appreciated. Thank you, Marlene. She put it in the comments. So we have the email. It's justice at benedictcenter.org. We also have the information in Spanish. Again, um, we um, I know Benedict Center could use that for a lot of the residents they serve on the south side. So please reach out to them if you have those items. All right. We have a full week next week for all of you. Um, I know Monday we're going to have a very important civic engagement update. Tuesday, Michael Waite from Employ will be joining us on our youth day and letting us know about our youth employment deadline, which will be May 8th coming up. So excited about that interview with Maria and our youth organizers. Wednesday, we're very thankful that Elsa Bautista Diaz from uh, Alas will be returning for another interview with Alan. And then on Thursday, we have John Sampson returning from 16th Street Clinic. And on Friday, I won't be here. It'll actually be my birthday that day, so I'm taking the day off. But the lovely Gabe Charles will be stepping in that day, and she'll be doing an interview with Assistant Professor of Latinx Studies at Marquette, Sergio Gonzalez. So I'm excited to see that later. Uh, we wish you well. Please don't forget about May Day. Please don't forget to get vaccinated and keep masking up. Be well. Thank you all. Has this live forum been informative and useful to you? What part of the forum could be improved or changed to make it better? Please take a quick survey that's located in the comments section so that we can keep 3 o'clock with SAC going for residents. Thank you for tuning in.